Hi, and welcome back to our joins module. Let's take a look at the as of join. Um, so previously we'd seen the left join and how that works. Um, the as of join is the first of two bitemporal joins available to us in KDB. Um, so what that means is they're joins related to time and transaction time. Um, so the common use case um, or example of this in the financial industry would be um, if I have a set of trade data, so I've got all my trade executions, um, and then I um, want to check um, the validity of whether that was best execution or not, um, I could look up on a, a quote table and that would show me the price. Um, so I could basically say, at the time that trade happened, find me the latest um, price for that trade. Um, so in that way, um, I can join as of a certain time and that's where the name as of um, comes from. Um, so you're not joining on equality, you're um, getting the latest prevailing um, information from another table um, as of a certain um, time. Now it doesn't have to be time, that's just most commonly what it's used for. Um, you can see here the notation is AJ and then we've got functional notation here, um, whereas before with LJ we used um, infix notation but for AJ we must use square brackets and then we pass our list of ma matching columns so most commonly you'll see a time column passed in here um, and then we've got two tables T1 and T2 so as before T1 would be your main data set that you want to keep and then T2 will represent um, supplementary columns that you're trying to join on um, so this is really powerful I don't think there's a out of the box um, direct equivalent in SQL. This is something that's pretty unique to KDB or, or used to be, but a lot of other languages um, have implemented a very similar um, join because it because it does have so much power. Um, so if we look at this um, in terms of our taxi data set, first of all here we're um, posing the question, so let's say there are three reports of individuals who have lost their phone or wallet, who are picked up shortly before the time um, who said how many passengers were in the taxi. So which vendor were they riding with? So that's a bit of a mouthful. mouthful. Um, but basically we've got three people say they've lost their belongings um, and we need to look up, um, you know, they, they've given us a time that they were in the, uh, in the taxi or around that time and they know how many passengers were in the taxi um, with them at that time. So um, we're going to try and use this and look up against our trips data set to see um, if we can find that exact journey that they were on. So first of all, to do this, we're creating um, an input table. So I've got three passengers. Um, I've got um, my event time here. So this was the times that were given to us by these um, individuals. And then individual one said there was one passenger in the car at the time. Individual two said there was two and individual three said there was three. So um, using AJ, AJ, we can use this as our left-hand side table because this is primarily, this is the, you know, our, the base of the table that we want returned. Um, and what I'm gonna join on the right-hand side is my trips data. So if we pull this out here and just have a quick look at this before the join, um, it will be more indicative of what's happening. So here we go, I've got, just certain columns. You notice again, I'm being selective here. I'm not pulling back everything, um, which is always a good idea, again, for performance and also so you don't end up overwriting certain columns that you don't want to be overwritten. Um, so I'm taking back the passengers. I need the passengers because that's one of the columns I'm keying on. Um, my event time here, I'm actually um, rewriting or, or renaming my pickup time to be event time. So um, in the join here, you see the first column that's joined on is passengers and then event um, event time. So I must have that event time column in both tables. Um, but actually the time column in our trips table or Jan 09 table is actually called pickup time. So what I'm doing is renaming that to event time. I'm also selecting the vendor because that's the question, which vendor were they writing with? So I need that information pulled back. Um, and then I'm pulling back the pickup time. And that's always something um, useful to do. So after you've done your join, um, you have the like the input time from the, the second table. So you're able to keep both times. Um, so you can kind of see your, your two sources of times. Um, and we'll see that in our resulting join. Um, so this is my right hand side. Um, you'll notice it's unkeyed as is my left hand side. Again, both tables can be keyed or unkeyed. Um, the, there, there may be performance improvements if both are keyed on the columns that you're searching on. 
Um, so if you're seeing bad performance with your AJ, that's something to look at implementing. Um, but let's split this out. I'm just going to put this onto a few different lines to help with readability. So I've got three inputs. Um, I've got my columns to join on. My first table, which is two columns, um, my passengers, my event time, and then I'm trying to basically join on this vendor column and the pickup time to that data and get the latest result. So I can see I end up with three rows. So you'll end up with the same number of rows as you have on your left hand side table. So similar to the left join in that way. And I can see I've got my vendors here joined on as well as the pickup time column. So let's just have a look at the right hand side table here to see if we can kind of prove that for our own peace of mind that that has, has done what we thought it would do. Um, so I'm just going to split this out here and I'm going to add a where clause on my pickup time. So our pickup time um, is greater than, and let's look at the last example here. So this was my pickup time and I'm just going to go a little bit before this so that I can see what was happening in and around. Uh, so we go to 28 seconds past four. Does that show us anything interesting? So um, we go a little bit further on. So if we go to 29, yes. So we can see here, um, my, my event time was 4.30 and my vendor, or my passengers were three. So if I look here, I, I had, um, there was a trip that happened at 4.30 on the button, but the reason why we're not joining on that one is because the passengers were incorrect. So I need to scroll up and look for where the, the, the last result where there was three passengers. So this is that trip. So that's why when we look down here, we see we've joined on the vendor. And because I've kept my pickup time column, I'm able to compare you know, um, the, the event time that I'm searching by and then that last prevailing time here. So that can help you pick out exactly which line you're joining on. So you can see that that, that can be useful. Um, so in this way, I'm, I'm, I'm joining on to the, um, this is saying this is probably the, the trip that happened um, for that individual. Um, as this was the last trip with three passengers um, around the 4.30 mark where they remember traveling in the car. Um, so hopefully that illustrates how powerful this join can be. Um, especially when we're t talking about, you know, time series data um, and lots of it. Um, and it's interesting to see an example that isn't just the trading quote example, but this, you can see how this could be applied where your um, input here would be your trade data and then your right hand side would be all your quotes, so all your price data. Um, and you'd be able to do a lookup that way. Um, so we're also showing here, um, we're just adding on some extra passengers here. And we're seeing if we create a new timetable that's got six rows instead of three, um, and we do this exact same join as before, we're not doing anything different. Only difference is our left-hand side input. Um, and we see our output table is six rows rather than three. So um, yeah, that's as of join. Um, have a go at exercise 11. Um, as I said before, let's you know there are other joins um a lot of them here the keyed ones um are quite similar to left join so inner join plus join they do different things so you know um the, they have a similar notation and similar way of working um and then on the as of as of as of column here um that's more like our bitemporal joins um and the main other one is the window join. So we've got the as of join, we understand that gets us the last prevailing value. Window join, um, you can kind of, um, whatever you're, you're thinking there, you can probably guess what it's trying to do. So instead of getting the latest as of a certain time, we're actually passing um, the join a window. And within that window, we're saying, um, you know, you can aggregate the results, for example. So you could get the sum um, of something or you get like the average price or the max price within a certain window um, and join it on to your trade data, for example. So that's a very common application. Um, again, you know, the window joins um, and some of those other joins are more, more advanced and we, we do cover them in detail in um, separate courses we have. Um, we go into a lot more detail in joins, but um, yeah, hopefully that's given you a flavor of what you can do with our different joins in KDB. Um, so thanks very much and I'll see you in the next module.